Get mechanical now or be hard stuck forever. Six months ago, I was admittedly hard stuck GC1, nope. barely able to touch GC2 with the help of friends. Today, I'm playing rank twos with some of the best in the world, taking down top RLCS, NA, and EU teams. Ever since I started playing with pros, they told me some information that completely changed how I view mechanics and what I actually train. So today, I'm covering why you need to train mechanics, and more specifically, the two mechanics I wish I started training earlier that have been helping me dominate ranked. Wow. Also, many of you guys know I run Rocket League's largest live coaching program, but what you may not know is some of the new names we've brought on for our Season X launch. But if you want to learn more about why some of these players are coming to coach inside my program exclusively, DM me on Discord with the keyword Pulse, and I'll put you in touch with some of them. Link in the description below. Otherwise, enjoy the video, guys. To start it off, let's first talk about why you need to get mechanical if you want to rank up long term in Rocket League. Now, first, just as a warning, before I even get into this, I want to say I didn't hold the views I had now until I started playing with pros like three, four, five weeks ago. For the longest time, I was totally in agreement with Flakes. I was always of the opinion that, you know, if you want to get GC1, GC2, GC3, really all that matters most is smart decision making and being careful in game. Recently, though, I learned learned two things that kind of changed how I view this. Number one, you can't learn Rocket League properly with bad mechanics. What I've noticed coaching a lot of players is if you play Rocket League too long, especially at the lower ranks, with the wrong set of mechanics or just like with not enough mechanics, you start to learn how to play the game in bad ways. One super common issue I see in like the diamond and the champ ranks is when people attack on offense. 90% of the time when I see like a diamond or a champ go for a dribble play, it is literally always a carry dribble into a flick. Now, sometimes this can be good, but the problem that I see is when these players only know how to do carries and dribbles, they go for them in situations where it's just terrible to do so. Then they get punished, they get scored on, and they don't know why because they don't have the right mechanics for the job. Long story short, I want you to think of mechanics like a toolkit. Your goal should be to incrementally level up your toolkit and level up your abilities in Rocket League. That way, every time you get the ball, every time you're defending, every time you're moving around the field, you can pick the best skill for the job. Not playing Rocket League with the right set of skills or enough skills means sometimes you literally can't make the best decision in game. There could be a play with a way higher winning percentage that you literally can't select because you don't have the max. So be careful completely avoiding mechanics and only focusing on game sense because if you get stuck too long with the wrong set of mechanics, you might just develop bad habits. The second reason you need to get mechanical or risk being hard stuck is because the most important mechanics in Rocket League take the longest to learn. And for the longest time, I didn't want to accept it. But the truth is, if you want to compete at the highest levels of Rocket League, and really just in general, the two most important things I'd say in this game are speed and consistency. If you're incredibly fast and incredibly consistent, you can get away with almost anything. And yet speed and consistency are unfortunately the things that take the longest to train. The most important Rocket League mechanics take consistent reps to get down. Now, don't get me wrong. You can absolutely rank up quickly by focusing on just tweaking some decision-making things. I will always believe the quickest way to rank up is replay review. Like just getting somebody who's better than you to look at your game, tell you about some of the small habits they see and tweaking those. That's the fastest way. But if I had to pick the best long-term way to get better in Rocket League is to train the mechanics that are tough, take consistent reps to get down, but when you understand them, your gameplay just completely transforms. But long story short, mechanics are like your toolkit. If you're playing with the wrong toolkit, you're playing a different game. Not only that, but the most important mechanics take a long time of just consistent small increments to improve. So while you can isolate certain skills, the best way to long term get better in Rocket League is to get mechanical. And if I had to pick, there are just two mechanics I think you need to focus on. So without any further ado, let's move on to the two key mechanics you need to train to get on hard stuck. 
what two mechanics do you need to train long term just as a warning there are way too many mechanics in rocket league for me to say you only need to train these two things but long term if i had to pick just two things to give you to train the first and more obvious of the two is of course directional air roll i genuinely think the best decision i made in rocket league when it comes to mechanics is learning air roll i started about a year ago and i want to say i really only started feeling super confident like i have true mastery of air roll left about a month ago long story short i just think air roll is one of the most impactful mechanics you can learn in rocket league directional air roll is one of those mechanics where the key is not absolute volume it's small incremental training sessions that add up over a long period of time there's a reason almost every pro even the ones who used to only use joystick air roll are now using directional air roll because the precision you can get with this mechanic and the consistency at the skill ceiling you can reach is unmatched not only that but understanding air roll will bleed into every other important part of high rank gameplay it will increase your speed with your recoveries it will increase your shooting accuracy by allowing you to get precise air roll movements on your car it will increase your ability in the air to be able to double tap to be able to flip reset it'll make you stronger off the walls because you'll have better understanding of how to move your car if you're not training air roll start now Number two, it's going to sound weird, but the mechanic is power slide. I know you're saying, Luke, how could you use power slide to get better at Rocket League? And if you don't truly play at a really fast speed in Rocket League, you probably don't understand all the situations where power slide is so important. But there's a graph in Rocket League that literally shows like a straight trend line between your rank and the frequency at which you power slide in game. Average power slide time per game is like one of the closest approximators of rank in Rocket League. But the reason power slide is so good is because all the attributes that air roll has in the air, power slide will contribute to on the ground. The better power side you have, the better dribbling, the better cut control, the better bounce dribbles you'll have, the better recoveries you'll have, and overall, just your car control and your precision, speed, and accuracy will be so noticeable between you if you have good power slide and somebody who doesn't have good power slide control. To get better, I just recommend small intervals of training a little bit every day, and you're gonna notice how much learning this mechanic will actually lead into other aspects of your gameplay. For the longest time, I thought it was just air roll, because you know, that's that's the flashy thing that all the pros do. Air roll makes them good in the air, but power slide is really the secret to being insane and smooth and consistent on the ground. But those are the two mechanics I wish I had started training earlier, because I would have gotten to the point I'm at now so much faster if I did. Now that you know why you need to get mechanical, what you need to start training first, let's talk about how to actually train these two key mechanics, air roll and power slide. I'll give alternatives in a second, so I just want to apologize in advance to all the console players out there. I read your comments, I'm sorry, but I have to tell the truth, the best way to increase both your air roll and your power slide control is probably in workshop maps. Reason being is because the setup of these maps, especially like with rings, creates challenges and tests that that you have to have good car control in order to pass a level. In free play or even like a training pack, it's very easy to think you understand a mechanic, but when you have a really small room for error that's artificially created by like flying through a ring or, you know, doing like a map like dribble to overhaul where you have to dribble the ball through some obstacles, that's what really gets your car control, your speed and your precision to the level it needs to be to be relevant in game. If I could list out my best workshop maps for air roll and for power side, less rings and rings three by dmc best workshop maps to train air roll dacia spring electric challenge ever sax dribble challenge are kind of like a mix between you know air roll and power side because they incorporate some dribbling and some flying and then finally if you just want to focus on power side and your dribble control dribble to overhaul goaded map probably best dribbling map of all time. If you can't train workshop maps, even though they are the best, my advice for console players and still for PC players, because I think this is important too, is that if you can, training free play is probably better than training packs just for the purpose of air roll and power slide. In my opinion, here's how to use free play versus training packs. Free play is great for training the long-term mechanics that come up in game a lot and that require speed and consistency. Training packs, on the other hand, are good for isolating very specific specific mechanics. 
So for example, free play is where I go to train, you know, air roll, power slide, just like general first touches and like my speed and recovery. Whereas training pack is where you specifically isolate something. Free play is more general, roughly speaking. To train power slide, I really just recommend things like the hot potato drill, where you try to keep a bounce with the ball, cutting around the map, trying to carry the ball using power slide, do 90 degree turns. And once you can do those, do 180 degree turns, 360 even once you can, and really just focusing on always holding down power slide when you land to maintain momentum. For air roll, it's all about the same thing, just forcing yourself into awkward situations with air roll, air rolling off both sides of the wall, doing setups on both sides of the wall, sending the ball at you while you're on the backboard, and using air roll to adjust. I see workshop maps as the place where you like train the skill and first start to learn it. And free play is where you really hone in, you master the speed and you make sure it's usable in the in-game scenarios that you will use it. Okay, hopefully this doesn't get lost in translation. Of course, I think game sense and mechanics are important. But in my opinion, if you want to reach the highest ranks of Rocket League, you need to get mechanical with a certain few mechanics. The sooner you can get started training these mechanics in small intervals using the training methods I described, the quicker your results are going to compound and the smoother you're going to rank up over the long term. I guarantee it. Okay, hopefully that was helpful. If you want more training resources, I've been giving away top 10 lists of all my favorite packs for tons of different mechanics like air roll and dribbling. So you could go on Discord and DM me the keyword send if you want me to send you those lists and those packs. But otherwise, go ahead and share this with a friend who needs to get mechanical, but just doesn't know how to do it. As always, thank you all so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.